Hey everyone! I hope you all had a great weekend. I looked at all of the art that you shared on Schoology and it looks great. Thank you so much for sharing. I loved seeing all of it and some of you guys did such a great job on the birch trees. So you should all be very proud. Good job everyone. Um, so today, since we already practiced the leaves, we already practiced the branches, today we are going to put them together and draw the whole tree and if you have an outside area like if you have a backyard or a front porch and your parents are okay with it i definitely recommend going out there to sketch your tree if you have a tree close by that way it'll be right there so you can keep looking at it and look at your paper at the same time um, because the people that were in class, we got to go outside um, by the playground and we got to sketch those trees. So if you can do that, I would recommend it. Or if you have a window close by that has a view of a tree, you could just do that. Um, if not, I'll have pictures in this um, video for you to like pause and look at. But before we do that, we are going to do the breathing and the yoga pose of the week. So our yoga pose for this week is the boat pose. So you can go ahead and pause this video, go do the breathing and the yoga pose of the day, and then come back. Okay, welcome back. So we are going to talk a little bit about the elements of art now. And so the elements of art are line, shape, form, space, color, value, and texture. But for today, we are gonna focus on line. So you can pause the video here and go click on the video element of line and then come back. So I want you to think about all the different kinds of lines that you saw. Um, why do you think lines are important? And what lines do you personally like? Um, like if you're feeling in that maybe like go with the flow type of mood, you could do more curvy lines. If you are feeling more bold, you could do like darker lines. So um, there's no wrong lines that you can do. It's just kind of helps you develop your own artistic style. So now we are going to see some examples of um, paintings of trees by different artists and I want you to notice their lines, how do their lines make you feel, um, what makes their lines special. The first painting we are looking at is called Almond Blossom by Vincent Van Gogh and he painted this in 1890. So over a hundred years ago he painted this and he did this painting because his brother sent him a letter at the time telling him that he just had a son and so Vincent decided to make this painting for his brother to congratulate him and his brother's favorite things were blossoming trees and blue skies and so that's why he made him this painting and trees also are a symbol of new life. This next painting is called The Tree of Life by Gustav Klimt and he painted this in 1905. And so I want you to think about how is this painting different from the last one that we saw? Um, what do you think about the lines in this one? And also there are a lot more shapes as you can see triangles and circles also it is more abstract because trees in real life don't look like this but we can still tell it is a tree and he uses a lot of curly lines kind of in a spiral shape and so i want you to think about that whenever you're making your trees you know don't be afraid to be creative don't be afraid to make something that does not look exactly like the real tree, you know, because it is your art and it is your style. 
The final painting is called Bordighera by Claude Monet and this was done in 1884 and so at this time Monet started to become more successful and so he would take a train to Bordighera which is a seaside town in Italy and so he painted this while he was visiting that town and I want you to think about what colors do you see and also what do you see in this painting um, what makes it different from the other paintings and um, somebody in class today actually said that she noticed that there were so many colors in the trees that you wouldn't really notice at first like you can see there's purples and blues and reds right like it's not just a simple brown and even with the leaves you can see all the different colors in the leaves that he uses not just green but he blends and mixes a lot of colors and Monet is very famous for doing this and also he's very famous for his small brush strokes as you can see in the picture um, so most of his paintings from far away they look very realistic but then as you get up closer you can see all the tiny brush strokes and all the different colors that he adds to it. So now I'm going to show you some examples that some scholars did here at school sketching. As you can see um, here she included the fence and the wire. She included a lot of details. Um, some people wanted to focus more on shading and blending and other people got very detailed with their art. Um, and you can notice that everyone's style is just so different and that's what I love about all of your art. Some people wanted to be more creative with their trees. So don't be afraid to make yours unique and special. And these were all great examples and I loved how different and unique each one was. So I wanted to include these clips of these trees just so that you can look at them. I want you to notice um, what directions are the branches going in and notice all the tiny branches that are going off those branches. You know, what shapes are the leaves in? Um, do you feel like the lines are flowy? Do they curve? Um, what kind of shapes do they make? So we're just going to take a minute or two and just observe these beautiful trees. A tip for you if you are sketching outside or if you are sketching anything that is in front of you is to put your hands in the shape of a picture frame as you can see and that way you can kind of visualize what you want on your paper and so just play around with that a bit and then take some time and then when you do decide you can start and so I decided to focus on the trunk of this tree and so you can see my final drawing here, how that came out. So unfortunately, for some reason, the lighting right here is pretty bad. I'm sorry about that. 
Um, but basically I'm just sketching the lines very lightly and very loosely. Like I'm just trying to get the overall shape of the tree. And then after that, I go in with darker lines um, and I get more specific with the branches. And just like with the birch trees, I'm doing these sort of Y shapes. So it's like you're kind of outlining the branches and then you draw sort of like a V inside of the branches. Um, and I'm just adding a bunch of branches here since in my other drawing, I focused more on the tree trunk. I decided for this one, I'll focus on the um, smaller branches and the leaves. And you can also add as many branches as you want, or if there are too many, you know, you can add less branches. Like nobody is gonna look at the tree that you drew. So don't worry about it looking exactly like the picture or exactly like what you see in front of you. Feel free to make it your own. You can make branches skinnier. You can make them curve however you want to. So I am going to fast forward this video since this um, is basically the same thing just over and over again and I'm just showing you my process. So I'm going to speed it up. Um, feel free to pause it if you need to at any point. Okay, so finally I'm starting to add the leaves and I like to do this in kind of like a scribbly motion um, because I really try to focus on the movement of the trees um, rather than I guess each individual detail like very detailed leaves. I just like to capture the movement and the shape um, but if you like to focus on the shapes of the leaves more then you can do like the football shape leaves or any of the leaves that we learned how to draw um, in the other video. So feel free to do that as well. If you've never tried this like scribbling method, you can also feel free to try it. Um, the best thing about art is that it's like totally a safe place to make mistakes and to be free and to experiment because there's nothing bad that could happen. The worst that could happen is maybe we're not very happy with how it comes out, but the important thing is that we are enjoying the process and we are, you know, just having fun. Also, this is just my style of drawing. I like to be more go with the flow and um, have like sketchy lines and I guess sort of messy lines. That's my style. But then I like to be bold with the contrast and the shading. So if you prefer bolder lines, straighter lines, you know, less sketchy, definitely go for it. I'm just showing you my style of drawing, but um, feel free to experiment and to figure out what is your style. You know, um, what do you feel expresses yourself the most? So now I am adding some shading and just a reminder 
whatever is in front of something is going to have a shadow behind it. But also you can kind of just, if you're looking at a tree while you're doing this, you know, just feel free to add shadow wherever you see it. Sometimes the tree trunk is like discolored, like there's darker brown spots and lighter brown spots. Or sometimes there is a shadow that is casted on the tree and that makes it darker. So as long as you're doing it kind of random and um, not really overthinking it, then it should look pretty realistic. But once again, if you want to make it more like your style and um, then, you know, shade it how you want to. I like things to be kind of blended and soft. So I like to kind of just shade all over the place wherever I feel it belongs. And the more that you look at trees and the more you study them the more it will come naturally to you where they should be darker um, so usually they're darker wherever the branches split off because usually there's like a crevice between the branches and so that is usually where the shadow is or um, sometimes like if it bends a certain way there will be a shadow there or if the tiny branches come off a bigger branch, usually there are shadows there too. And then also like on the sides of the tree trunk, because if you look at anything round, usually like the sides are darker than the part in the middle. the very end I am writing my signature feel free to make up your own artist signature and then you are done with your drawing so great job on your drawing I can't wait to see it on Schoology um, if you didn't get the chance to sketch outside and maybe this weekend you have the time or you're going to a park later, I would definitely bring some paper with you or if you have a sketchbook or a journal, that would be great. And just keep practicing and you will get better the more that you practice. Um, so to end the lesson, I have the reflection questions for you. So um, you can go ahead and reflect on the art that you made and then answer those in Schoology as well. And that is all for today's lesson. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing and message me on Schoology if you have any questions and I will see you guys next week. Bye.